As you watch this video, it will be useful for you to also be looking at a PDF file that looks like this screen. This PDF file is called a concept analysis wheel. The wheel that it shows can be useful to you in a variety of ways. First, it can help you identify and organize the types of problems that you encounter throughout the course. Second, it can help you identify the most important basic concepts that you'll use to solve complex problems. And third, it can help you identify themes that cut across most topics and problem-solving activities in this course. This course is about statistical modeling and related topics. The related topics include some of the most important concepts and procedures from algebra, geometry, calculus, and probability, in addition to statistics. For algebra, you'll learn more about how to build complex functions from simpler functions, and how to use them to describe patterns or trends in data. For calculus, You'll learn more about relationships between changing quantities and accumulating quantities. For geometry, you'll learn more about different kinds of distances, centers, and distributions. And, you'll also learn more about quantifying qualitative information, and about a variety of ways to rescale data. Throughout all of these activities, you'll develop ways to visualize the meanings of concepts and procedures that you use. And, in particular, you'll learn that all statistical procedures are based on models that make different assumptions about attributes such as distance, centrality, spread, or distribution. You'll also learn that all models are useful over simplifications of the situations they are intended to describe. So, in some ways, all models are wrong. Consequently, one of the most important abilities that you'll develop in this course will be to analyze and assess the assumptions which underlie the procedures you use, and the models that they presuppose. As you work on the in-class model development activities which are at the heart of this course, the results that you produce will be assembled using combinations of basic ideas shown around the inner circle of the wheel, and the type of problem you're working on usually will involve one of the types of issues that are mentioned in the outer circle of the wheel. In fact, most of the model development activities involve one of three types of issues shown here. A. Comparing distributions of data. B. Comparing parameters, such as means, or variances. Or C. Comparing relationships among two or more collections of data. Then, these three types of problems occur in two flavors. The first focuses on developing ways to operationally define or measure concepts and attributes that cannot be measured directly. These attributes may involve the productivity of workers, the flight characteristics of paper airplanes, or the friendliness of students in several different schools. The second involves using samples of data to make inferences about larger universes of subjects. And, to make these inferences, you'll be creating simulations to investigate the likelihood that different kinds of results should occur. For both of the preceding two types of problems, statistics is about measuring characteristics associated with collections of data. So, one theme that cuts across most of the problems you'll encounter in this course involves operationally defining or measuring such things as distances among data points in a graph. And, you'll see that different kinds of distances often lead to different ways of thinking about centrality, spread, distribution, and other characteristics associated with collections of data. In this course, You'll be spending most of your time working on activities where you develop your own statistical models and procedures. And, as you develop simulations, procedures, and operational definitions, you'll also need to analyze and assess results that have been produced by others. This is because, almost always, there will be several alternative ways to think about nearly every problem and situation that you investigate. So, you need to be able to assess underlying assumptions, strengths, and weaknesses of alternative ways of thinking. And, you need to be able to visualize the meanings of ideas and procedures you or others use. 
In general, the model development activities, which are the heart of this course, are simulations of real-life situations where statistical thinking is useful. Nearly every model development activity that you work on in this course will fall into one of the six categories shown in this table. Furthermore, even for follow-up activities that focus on smaller ideas of skills, most of the problems fall into this slightly more detailed list of categories. This Tinker Plots worksheet shows three simulations that might help you imagine how you'll be able to recognize the small number of basic types of problems that you'll encounter in this course. And remember, each of these three types of problems occur in two basic forms. When you compare distributions, you often investigate the frequency of data points in some kind of space. For example, Imagine that these two graphs show the frequency of burglaries in a given town. You could investigate the likelihood that these burglaries are equally likely to occur at any location across the two towns. When you compare parameters for two or more collections of data, you'll usually investigate characteristics such as centrality or spread around central points. For example, in this graph, the vertical lines show the mean values for three sets of data. You could investigate the likelihood that these three groups were randomly selected from the same population. When you compare relationships or patterns of interactions among collections of data, you'll usually create functions or rules to describe patterns or trends that explain how one collection of data is related to another. So, even when you're working on the most difficult problems in this course, you'll come to recognize them as involving combinations or particularizations of these few basic types. Furthermore, most of the computation procedures that you'll need also reduce the combinations of the six that are shown in the table on the left. In fact, you only need to look at the six formulas shown in the left column of this table. For the purposes of this course, the only reason to show you the formulas on the right half of this table is so you'll be able to read textbooks that you might use in some other course. The formulas on the left side of the table do the same things as the formulas on the right. But, in statistics reference books, formulas for most computation routines continue to be shown in forms that are computationally simple, rather than conceptually simple. Whereas, in this course, what you really need are formulas that are conceptually simple, where it's clear what they mean and what they are doing. So, rejoice! In this course, all you really need are the six basic formulas shown on the left half of this table. Other formulas can be assembled using combinations of these.